it's safe to say Gervonta Tank Davis and Rolando Roli Romero aren't fans of each other. If it was the streets, these niggas would have been smoked. You trash. You trash. Both men have been very vocal about this matchup, even prior facing off in a pre-fight press conference back in October of last year. In fact, Roli has not just had a lot to say about Tank, but also the lightweight division in general. Romero believes that after Tank, the champions of the 135-pound division will also fall to his boxing prowess, and that it's not about if, but when. I say it like this, people avoid me for a reason. People avoid me for a reason. Of course, Tank Romero should have happened back in December of last year, but after multiple women came forward to level sexual assault allegations against Romero, Roley was removed from the December 5th Showtime pay-per-view bout, and in came the underrated but perhaps then untested Isaac the Pitbull Cruz. Davis faced some adversity, injured his left hand somewhere in the middle rounds, and even went the 12-round distance for the first time in his professional career, but fought well enough to score a unanimous decision over Cruz. However, nothing has really changed in the grand scheme of things. Romero was still the mandatory to Davis's WBA regular title, and Roley was more adamant than ever that he would be the one to not only defeat Tank, but also stop the Baltimore native. I mean, you guys really want my honest opinion, man? If I was in the ring, I'd knock him the fuck out. And a few months after Davis Cruz, the investigation surrounding sexual assault accusations against Romero was closed without charges being filed. And with nothing holding back the bout anymore, Tank Romero is back on for May 28th. Funny enough, this blockbuster fight, which is sure to do big numbers on Showtime pay-per-view, has been met with a mixed reception since it was initially scheduled last year, with most believing that Tank is simply a couple levels above Romero. While Romero is undefeated and is a powerful puncher who wings his shots from awkward angles, he will be facing his best opponent to date. Moreover, the brash-talking 26-year-old has also had a dubious unanimous decision against Jackson Martinez go his way, in a fight where Martinez seemingly did more than enough to win. All three in favor of the winner, Rolando Roli Romero! Rolando Romero getting the win! Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness! Of course, a fighter can have an off night, and one bad performance shouldn't take away from what Romero is. It's also important to note that Martinez is someone who likes to box off the back foot and employ negative tactics, something which naturally makes scoring a knockout a much harder task to achieve. Besides, more so than anything else, fighters can develop, and Romero seems to have done that in abundance especially considering his last two performances against Yigit and Jason Paldo were both against fighters who missed weight, with Yigit missing the weight by a whopping five pounds. That means officially, Roley fought a fighter a division above his natural weight class. The fighting spirit to disregard a clear disadvantage should perhaps be expected from Romero, who seemed destined to enter the world of combat sports at a young age when he began his fighting journey at the age of nine, when he started competing in judo. Initially, Roly Romero wanted to follow in the footsteps of his sister, Angelica Romero, who is a seven-time national judo champion. But Romero would eventually gravitate towards boxing after his father encouraged him to trade in his G for some gloves. Unfortunately for Tank, his introduction to boxing was not out of inspiration, but out of necessity. Yeah, both of my both both of my parents was on drugs. Uh, my mo my mother left me and my brother in, in the house by herself, you know. So um, they took us into custody. Gervonta Davis witnessed drug abuse as a youngster and survived an onslaught of gun violence around his Baltimore neighborhood that turned hearts dark. In fact, Davis was the youngest of three brothers at age five when Child Protective Services ordered their mother to give up custody of her children. With his father in prison, Davis would move from foster home to group home, and the disruption of those formative years hardened Davis. And at age eight, he would fight the neighborhood kids, which included near grown-ups for his brother. His uncle, James Walker, observed one of these skirmishes and, with financial assistance from another uncle to buy boxing equipment, took his nephew to a gym operated by coach Calvin Ford 
to try to pull Gervonta out of the unfavorable situation he was getting himself into. For those who watched the HBO series The Wire, Ford served as an inspiration for the show's character Cuddy, who on the show is a former stick-up man who's gone to jail for a long period of time, as Ford did for 10 years on racketeering and conspiracy charges. I don't want to hear no more street talk. We boxing up in here. We ain't fight. And just like the character in the popular TV show, Ford would turn Tank's life around by occupying him with work in the boxing gym. By Gervonta's own omission, if it wasn't for the gym, he would have been out in the neighborhood running up to no good. But thanks to his prestigious talents, he was out of town most of the time, away competing in competitions. After a stellar amateur career, which included 205 wins and only 15 losses, Tank would go pro and never look back. Unfortunately, some weren't as lucky, with Baltimore's unrelenting gun violence claiming Ford's son, who first trained Davis, along with several members of the gym. My son, he wanted to go back to Jersey, and he made a comment. We was, we was somewhere up D.C., and he sit there and say, man, you'll make a good role model for Javante. And ever since then, it was just like my son was just telling me, I'm not going to be here. Put shorty up under your wing. Such tragedy is a harsh reality Davis wasn't just blessed inside the ring, but also out of it. Of course, Davis is still hungry for more, and perhaps destined. In fact, while Tank Romero is sure to be a box office hit due to the fact that Romero is more than willing to promote the fight, Gervonta has fights in the future which are genuinely mega fights that could possibly transcend boxing itself. Most notably, a fight with fellow American and undefeated social media sensation, Ryan, King Rye Garcia, is the type of event that would easily smash the vaulted 1 million pay-per-view buy mark. Two rounds, baby, two rounds. Two rounds, I don't care, you on pause, two rounds. Funny enough, Romero started to gain notoriety after a leaked sparring session against Ryan, in which Rolando got the better of the 23-year-old. And while one can't take too much away from a spar, be it training or an actual bout, Roly knows only one way to fight, 100 miles per hour. And that's what makes the Tank Romero fight, perhaps, underrated. It will be an exciting bout for as long as it lasts. Romero, as with every other fight, will look to push the pace and drown Davis down the stretch, while Davis will understand that if Romero makes one mistake, Roly will likely be put down for the count. This is about where both boxer styles mesh, with each fighter looking to take the front foot. And with the pair not needing to look for each other inside the ring, this one, just like with every tank fight, should be a barn burner.